Hello, artists. Character Creator version 5 has arrived, bringing revolutionary improvements, including an HD character design workflow with subdivision support, enhanced shaders, and the next generation of facial animation system. In this video, we're going to look at the workflow for creating this character, where we'll put all the features of CC5 to the test by creating this humanoid alien. However, we'll be moving away from the classic human proportion canon to see how the program performs when we make things a bit more challenging. I'm Oscar Fernandez, and I'll be guiding you through this entire process, in which we'll only be using two programs, CC5, which will handle almost all the technical processes automatically, and ZBrush, where we'll let our imagination run wild and focus on the most artistic side of the project. For creating the character, we're going to start from a sketch made by KickArt, a young concept artist I've worked with several times before, and who will be in charge of designing this character as well as the ones to come. Once we've opened CC5, we simply press load neutral base to load the new character creator mesh. This mesh has perfect topology for sculpting and animation, optimized UVs, and the robust skeletal rigging we're already used to from previous versions. It also features a significant update to the iMesh. For now, I just want to focus on the volumes, so I'm going to go to the Materials tab, select the different body areas, lower the strength to zero, and set the diffuse to a darker gray. That way, we can better see the changes in the planes. Now let's start setting the basic proportions of our character using the program's own sliders. For the body, I'm mainly going to focus on the height of the pelvis, since our character will have short legs, as well as the size of the hands and feet. Personally, I like to start testing the communication between programs right from the beginning. So once we've made the initial adjustments, we send our character over to ZBrush. We press the Go Z Plus button and for now, in the settings, we're going to specify that it shouldn't send any kind of map, either color information nor normal maps, and we'll keep the default subdivisions. With the rest of the values as they are, we press Go Z and our character is automatically loaded into ZBrush. Here it is, and everything is going according to plan. So we go back to CC5 to continue adjusting the proportions of the head and face. The sliders let me move the eyes apart and change their tilt very easily, something that would be much more difficult if we sculpted it directly in ZBrush. A few more small adjustments, and we go back to Go Z Plus to send our model again. This time, the reeling action is automatically selected since the connection is already established. And that's it. We've now loaded the changes we just made to our model. Now we're ready for the fun part. But before we start, let's keep in mind a couple of very, very important considerations. First, we can't modify the model's topology. Second, don't delete the subdivision levels. Third, don't change the default pose. And fourth, don't rename the subtools. With that clear, we can start sculpting in ZBrush. In the initial stages, when we're looking for the general shape of the head or face, we're going to try to adapt to the facial topology of the model. By doing this, we'll ensure that the deformations on the character's face behave perfectly when we apply expressions later on. To visualize these regions more easily, we can isolate just the head and load the texture provided by CC5 itself. My advice is to take it slow and gradually find the shapes of our character. Don't get carried away by the subdivision levels. Build the model from the most general to the most detailed. Don't rush during this phase. As I mentioned before, I prefer to move forward step by step and make sure everything is going as expected. So from time to time, I send the character to CC5 using the new GoZ+. In the plugin options, we select only level 0, without maps or textures. Once the model is updated in CC5, we can check that everything works correctly by loading animations for the whole body or specific ones for the face. Sometimes, the sliders in CC5 are way more practical than sculpting directly in ZBrush so we can make adjustments throughout the process and bring them back into ZBrush to keep sculpting and adding details. While we're working on the character's shape, 
We can repeat the process of sculpting in ZBrush and tweaking in CC5 as many times as needed. Now we already have a basic shape that also works great in CC5, so we can move on to adding secondary and tertiary shapes to our character. Up to this point, we were mainly focused on making sure the facial structure matched the topology of the base mesh. But now we're going to start adding character to the model with some anatomical volumes that will give our character a unique and expressive look. Here, I'm also going to use the amazing brush pack inspired by Geiger and Beksinski by Pavel Menios to add some extra details. We'll do exactly the same on the body, defining the muscles, large skin folds, and the body's natural curves. These initial changes are essential for the character to work well at a medium distance. If our character doesn't fit the typical human proportions, the skeleton might shift out of place a bit, or the animations might not work perfectly because of overly exaggerated proportions. Once again, the solution is super simple. To adjust the skeleton to our character's body, just press the Adjust Bones button. Enable symmetry and do an automatic adjustment for both the body and the face. If we want to correct our character's base, pose, or how it behaves in an animation, we can use the Pose Offset tool to select the part of the body we want to fix and adjust it. Here we can see an example where we fixed the fists colliding just by modifying the offset. Once again, I turned to KitKart to help me with the design and color palettes. Out of all the proposals, we've decided to go with this one. The last thing we're going to do in ZBrush is texture our character using polypaint. We'll use the skin shade material so the material itself doesn't affect the colors, and we'll apply various techniques, gradients, masks, and manual painting to add color to our character. This part is really fun, and it's where our character finally gets a true, unique identity. Once we've added all the sculpting details and applied the color information, we can consider our character creation finished. At this stage, we can increase up to subdivision level 7, which will give us a huge polygon count and no limitations for sculpting or texturing. This would be the final result of our character, now painted in ZBrush. So now we come to one of the most powerful new features in Character Creator 5, support for subdivision levels and automatic texture baking. As we've already seen, the new version of Gozi Plus has some differences compared to previous versions. Let's see how to work with this new version. Up until now, whenever we've sent the model from ZBrush to CC5, we've done it using subdivision level 0 and without generating any textures. But now it's time to also generate the normal and displacement maps for the details, as well as the diffuse map using the information from the polypaint. So now we're going to select level 0 and press the buttons corresponding to each of those maps. When you press all, all the textures are generated automatically using the UVs included in the character creator base mesh. And once they're generated, all we have to do is update the model in CC5 so they load automatically. In my case, I'm not going to update the diffuse for the eyes since I want to keep the original texture. All the textures have already been loaded, but we still can't see the result because at the beginning of the project we set the intensity to zero. So we select the different body parts, turn the strength up to 100% and restore the white color of the diffuse. With just one click, everything is integrated into Character Creator. What we've done so far could already be done in CC4, but here's what's new. Let's subdivide once in CC5 and go back to ZBrush. From GoZ Plus, we activate level 1 and all the textures. And again, we press Alt to generate them automatically. We update the model in CC5 again. In this case, we're only going to load the textures. And now we can already see a significant difference between the two models. But that's not all, because we can repeat the process once more by subdividing to level 2 in Character Creator and also activating level 2 with its textures in Gozi. We update the model one last time, and here we can see the difference. But beyond all these features, 
The big improvement in CC5 is the high resolution we can work with. Here we can see the polygon density that each subdivision level offers us, starting from level 0, which is the unsmoothed mesh, moving on to level 1, which already provides a good amount of polygons, and finally level 2, where no detail escapes our control. Gozi Plus generates optimized maps for each of the levels, and we can adjust the intensity of each one at the different subdivision levels according to our needs. Let's compare the different levels of quality we can achieve by playing with the subdivision levels and the map settings. If we look at subdivision level 2 with the displacement map at 100%, we can see that the actual displacement of the vertices produced by this map brings a spectacular improvement to the character silhouette, with more natural shadows and enhanced fine details that we were already getting with the normal map. Here we can better see the difference that comes from adding subdivision levels and the automatic generation of the displacement map in CC5. This new update allows us to take our models to the highest level of detail in ZBrush and, with a single click, transfer all those details to CC5, resulting in a fully animatable character. We can continue to apply morphs, textures, clothing, hair, and accessories, while preserving all the facial and body animation capabilities of character creator characters, including motion libraries, motion capture, lip sync with voice, and pose and animation editing. This is just one of the new improvements in Character Creator 5. Check out the other new features we have to discover.